On today's menu, we're making lumpias. We're gonna start off with ground chicken, green onion, and some garlic. Dude, look at this big ass carrot. We're gonna grate that and throw it in, as well as some water chestnuts, mint. Now this is really just there for the texture. You know, it's a little bit crunchy. Moving on, we're gonna season it with a little bit of pepper, salt, and soy sauce. Give that a mix until you get a concoction that looks like this. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to wrap. And there's a lot of different techniques of how to approach this. You can cut the wrappers into triangles and then roll it like a typical egg roll and then seal it off with some egg white pros and cons it is very beautiful but it is time consuming i would honestly just recommend you roll it like a carpet and cut it in half okay either way you roll it your back is going to start hurting how am i 21 years old with back issues huh anyways we're gonna fry these in some hot oil until they're golden brown and you're gonna want to do this in batches okay do not just plop the whole plate of lumpias inside once you're done plate it add a little bit of parsley and yeah that's pretty much it serve it with some sweet and sour sauce or banana ketchup but i would rather eat a jean jacket before i eat ketchup Okay, okay, everyone keeps asking, you want cinnamon rolls? I'll give you the best you've ever had. Half a cup of milk, about 98 degrees Fahrenheit. Two and a half teaspoons of instant yeast, give that a little mix, let that sit 10 minutes. Three cups of all-purpose flour, three tablespoons of sugar, oh. half a teaspoon of salt. Add your milk and yeast mixture, two room temperature eggs, two and a half tablespoons of water. Mix for five minutes. Three and a half tablespoons of unsalted butter, five more minutes. Shape them into a ball, breathe full in, wet towel, one and a half hours, or until doubled, mad thick. Okay, don't punch it down, flour work surface, your dough out, half a cup of dark brown sugar, two teaspoons of cinnamon. Mix that up, flour at the top, roll your dough into an 18 inch rectangle. Melted butter, put on your sugar mixture, rolling it up, put your dough into nine equal pieces. Evenly spaced apart, wet towel, 30 minutes. In the oven, make it 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 to 25 minutes. Let them cool to room temp. Just glaze those buns. Oh uh, yeah. Yes. Glazed top, caramelized bottom. This is how you make the greatest. One cup of brown sugar, one cup of peanut butter, one large egg, one teaspoon of baking soda, half a cup of chocolate chips. Mix it all together. Divide into 12 and place on a prepared baking sheet at 350 for 8 to 10 minutes. Boom. On today's menu, we're making Swedish meatballs. In a big ass bowl, we're gonna combine breadcrumbs, cow milk, heavy whipping cream, one singular egg, a little bit of garlic, pepper, salt, and finally, all purpose seasoning, which I have never used before in my life. Anyways, give that a good mix and let it vibe out for about 10 minutes while we cut an onion. What we want is really small, fine pieces, okay? Toss them in there along with some parsley. And lastly, but not the leastly, we're gonna add ground beef and pork. My store only had 95% fat free pork, which I would not recommend because it tastes like a Timberland boot. Anyways, mix everything together and we're gonna take our meat mixture and roll it into the size of a golf ball. Moving on, get yourself a pan on high heat, throw in some olive oil and a little bit of butter and we're just gonna basically brown our meatballs on all sides, okay? I mean, just look at that crust. Yes! Once you're ready to eat, throw it onto a plate and you can eat it plain or you can serve it with some gravy and then add some burst. I had to make this because I miss going to Ikea eating the meatballs and buying furniture that would eventually break in a few months. <laughs> I miss Start with that chicken thigh, pat it dry. Get them all in a bowl. Season them all with Tabasco, cayenne, salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Mix it up until it looks just like that. Two cups of flour, cayenne, paprika, cornstarch, salt, and pepper. Mix it up. That's the flour mix. Two eggs, buttermilk. You know, want to mix that up. Pour that over the chicken. Mix up the chicken. Get it in there and let it sit. Then coat the chicken very well in the flour. Spicy mayonnaise, mayonnaise, paprika, cayenne, Tabasco, simple, mix. Oil in, check that it's hot enough. Has to be hot enough, you wanna hear that noise. Chicken thigh, five to six minutes each side, golden brown, and then flip. After that, take it out, just like that. Toasted brioche bun, spicy mayonnaise, both sides, pickles, that chicken, top it, Yes. Uh. On today's menu, we're making ice cream crepes. All you really need is the batter, which is a combination of flour, eggs, a little bit of vegetable oil, almond milk, a little yeah. of salt. And to really spice things up and bring in that flavor, we're gonna add some vanilla extract. Give that a really good mix, and now it's time to cook, okay? Get yourself a small pan on low heat, and we're just gonna straight butter the surface area. And from that point, take a ladle full of batter and just pour it in the pan, you know? Really simple stuff, you know, from a professional standpoint. The best advice I can give you, honestly, is to fill the 
bottom of the pan with batter at one time. Mmm. Check up on it, and once you get a nice brown like this, we're basically gonna flip it over onto a plate. Let's go, my first crepe! Now from this point, you can really just do whatever you want. I'm just gonna fill mine up with some Nutella, bananas, and that's how you make the ugliest crepe I've ever seen in my goddamn life, okay? Hideous. We're just gonna fix that by adding powdered sugar, strawberries, chocolate syrup, and vanilla ice cream. Let's go! This is hands down my favorite dessert in the entire world. Perfect for this weather, okay, because it is getting very hot. I don't even have an AC. <laughs> Homemade mozzarella like super stringy. Cut this mozzarella cube into half inch sticks. Now I'm gonna bread the mozzarella sticks. Start with some flour, then egg, then flour again, then egg again, and then breadcrumbs. Now just repeat with all the sticks and fry. And take it out. Now repeat with the rest. And pull. Oh. Oh, I can't even capture all so much. Look how amazing and good it looks. Let's try it with a tomato sauce. Mm. Click the plus button for more recipe. Here's how I make better than Olive Garden fettuccine Alfredo. Prepare two boxes of fettuccine noodles to al dente. While those are cooking, start the sauce by melting one stick of Kerrygold butter over medium heat. Add three cloves of minced garlic, and for this, I use the garlic press. Cook two minutes until it becomes fragrant. Don't burn the garlic. Whisk in two cups of heavy whipping cream and cook for seven to eight minutes until it thickens. Whisk in one and a half cups of grated Parmesan cheese and a half teaspoon of pepper. Cook for two minutes more and turn off the heat. Add to strained noodles and experience pure bliss. This is so much better than Olive Garden. Okay, so you're at... Y'all are asking for fried chicken, but you didn't say which kind. I think we should do something special. Start with some chicken breast. Put that in a layer of plastic wrap. Chicken, another layer of plastic wrap. Eat that bit. Half an inch thick. Repeat with all your chicken. Season in both sides with salt. In three, in three separate containers. Three eggs. Splash of water. With a whisk. Whiskey business. Two cups of all-purpose flour. Two cups of panko breadcrumbs. Welcome to the breading station. Both sides in flour. Shake up excess. Then the egg. Both sides, obviously. And then, cook well in panko. Look at that. Repeat with the rest. Deep skillet. High heat oil. Put half an inch deep. Pan stove. A little over medium heat. Until the oil is hot at about 350 Fahrenheit. Carefully lay away from you. Fry that. For three to four minutes. Flip and fry another. Two to four minutes. The wire rack. Now that is a crispy. Katsu sauce. That's looking about right, but I think we need a little extra. Oh yeah, we got the sauce. Yes, sir. <laughs> Today I made the easiest recipe I've ever done. It's just making some cookies out of cake mix. You just need your cake mix, a third cup of oil, and two eggs. You can use any type of cake mix. You can use vanilla, funfetti, red velvet. You can even add like white chocolate chips or sprinkles. And then, so you saw that I scooped a piece of dough out and then dropped it in some powdered sugar, rolled it into a ball with my spoons, and put it on the baking sheet. Did this for the rest of the dough i put these babies in the oven at 375 for about 10 minutes they came out looking kind of ugly so i poured some more powdered sugar on it and they turned out looking beautiful scrumptious and i would recommend this to anyone who just has some cake mix laying around let me show you to make the world's easiest snack while you're stuck home quarantine which is oreos and milk. Oreos into your mug. Pour in milk to cover halfway. Now match it up with a fork, which is a good time to take out your anger for being stuck at home all day because of quarantining. <laughs> Once it's done, it looks like this. I know it looks like literal dirt, but just stick with me. Place in the microwave and microwave for 75 seconds. Bam, done for the last second. All right, let's check on it. Look at that. Let's dig in. Look at that, the ultimate chocolate cake. Surprisingly, it is freaking delicious. You guys have got to try this and click that plus button for more quarantine recipe. 
So today I really wanted to try to make churros, so I added a cup of water, half a cup of butter, a tablespoon of sugar, and boiled that on high. Then mix it around a bit, put in the flour, oh, cut off the heat before flour, mix that around, added some vanilla, mix it more, transferred it to this bowl, added an egg, and mix it with a hand mixer. It was still kind of lumpy, so mix it with this spoon. And then I got a piping tip and bag, put the dough inside there, and I wanted to make some long churros, like at Disney um, so I did that put it in the freezer oil to the pot and then made my cinnamon sugar mixture all you got to do is squeeze out the dough cut it with scissors and it falls right into the oil take it out when it's golden brown place on some paper and don't let it dry too much because you want it to stick to the cinnamon sugar now I'm frying my long boys until they're golden brown put in some sugar on that and then here's the finished products it was so good and so yummy S'mores French Toast. Cover bread in the chocolate of your choice. Put marshmallows over the chocolate. Cover. Warm one cup of milk for about 45 seconds. Add four cups of hot cocoa mix to the milk. Mix. Wait for the milk to cool down. Crack three eggs in a bowl. Add one teaspoon of vanilla. Whisk together. Add the hot cocoa mix. Mix together. Soak the sandwich in the mixture. Melt some butter on a pan. The French toast would look like this. Now place on the pan. Flip to the other side. It's easiest to use two spatulas. Put some powdered sugar on. You can add roasted marshmallows and melted chocolate. Crush up a graham cracker. Optional fruits. S'mores French toast. McDonald's McNuggets. Start with that chicken breast, go ahead and cut it up into little cubes and we're going to blend it in batches and we're going to pulse it. You could use a grinder if you have one, but I don't have one, I'm guessing a lot of you don't have one. You could use a blender, works just as good. Season the meat with a bunch of salt and pepper. And then the key to shaping your nuggets is to keep your hands wet so it doesn't stick to you. So you feel me? We made a few McDonald's shakes and you know, we went off with some dinosaurs, made a country. And look at that, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Throw it into the freezer for like two hours. For the dry mix, we're going to go flour, cornstarch, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, mix it up. For the wet batter, we're going to go eggs, half a cup of water, fourth cup of cornstarch, and whip that up. Then once your nuggets are hard, we're going to go dry, wet, dry, wet, and then leave on there. And then once you do that, you're going to heat up some oil once it bubbles around the, the stick, the wood, the chopstick, fuck. Throw them into the oil. Make sure they don't stick to each other. Fry them for about two minutes each side, take them out, and you got chicken McNuggets. Yes, sir. Uh,